Uh, and obviously you've had a, as you just said, a long career. Um, is there any moments where that sticks out as moments where you thought, damn, I can't believe I'm doing this? Oh, God, you know, I mean, maybe not in sort of a shocking way, but certainly in one of those ways, like, especially some of the really big tours that we did, like when you're sitting there, you know, a stadium with, you know, 80, 100,000 people in it and stuff, and you just kind of go, holy crap, this is, <laughs> this is amazing. Or you're, you know, I find myself many times in the studio because at the end of the day, I'm still a fan. And so I, I'd be sitting in the studio and I put on my headphones and I'm, and, and I'm listening in the next room to Joe Cocker singing, you know, or, or Barbara Streisand or, you know, people like that. And I just kind of, I'm, I'm fascinated because in, in, in my mind of minds, I'm still like this kind of a dorky kid who grew up in the San Fernando Valley. And, and if, and if I'm in some place and like Robert Plant's there or you're Clapton and they go, Hey Lee, man, how you doing? Yeah, <laughs> I go. Why do they know me? Why would they know me? Kind of thing, you know. I, I'm I'm still sitting there, kind of freaking out over that, and uh, and it's it's just strange, you know, how how these things come together. But there's been, you know, I mean, to me on on Phil Collins's tours, every time we play in the air tonight for me is special. Right. Just the tension in the room, watching that audience waiting for the drum fill, and like all, all these hands going up, you know, doing their the, doing the fill. It's one of those things you get goosebumps every time from the stage, you know. And and I feel really fortunate that that I've I've been able to be uh, a, a participant in some pretty remarkable uh, touring experiences. Like when I was on the road with Lyle Lovett and his large band. I mean, we're sitting there. And there's 16 guys on stage who are monsters. And when that thing would start cranking, it was like a freight train, you know. And you're sitting in the middle of this, is going. This is so fucking cool. You know, you're, you're kind of distancing yourself, you know, and, and you suddenly become an, an audience. And rather than one of the things the audience is enjoying, you're, you're more in their head space and looking around the stage and appreciating like all the talent that's up there and not even thinking of you mm. as being a real part of that. Right. So it's a trip. You know, I, I feel, you know, it's completely fortunate that 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 i've been able to sustain through all these years that uh i mean i've got some hand injuries but for the most part i'm not dealing with arthritis or anything like that so i haven't had anything that's taken away my ability to where i know a lot of people in the right. business because of physical issues just finally had to quit yeah, and yeah. Uh, i can't imagine that i think it would be like this mm. death right. to not be able to participate yeah i can imagine that um, has there been any moments where, you know, if you look at the other side of the coin, where you thought, can I, can I really keep doing this? Is this for me? Or that was never something you considered? No, not really. I mean, I've never, never considered that. There were periods where like in, in the eighties when synths came on the scene right. and it was, you know, most of the real live players were starting to suffer for the fact that like, you know, we would do these big orchestral dates and suddenly there were three guys with synths, hmm. you know, thin clav and, and something else. And, uh, you know, and you would just go, Jesus, it's got to be so hard for so many people. And there was a lot of synth bass going on, but it went for, for a while like that. But the fortunate part for me compared to a lot of guys in LA, because I always mixed recording and touring. Right. I tried to do, try to do both all the time. And there were a lot of guys who I knew that were, when the studios were really busy, they would say, how can you go on the road, man? Somebody's going to take your gig here, mm. you know, in the studio. And I'd go, I don't care. I like playing live. I mean, to me, live is, is so much more exhilarating than the studio. Sure, yeah. Um, but I love, I, I love both. But I, I treated it. It, it very professionally like when it when it would when i knew a tour was coming up there was a, a a pretty good block of producers who i normally would work with and i would call them all and say look i'm hitting the road i'm going to be leaving at such and such time and i will be back at such and such time and about two weeks before i'd be coming back i'd call them and remind them that i'm coming back and sometimes i would go right from the airport to the studio they would have a project going on and say no we'll wait for you or something or they would push it before i go and um, 
then as time went on, you know, I was able to use the studio during these really kind of crappy times of the record. I always used, used the road while the studios guys were suffering because of synth and all that. And then suddenly these guys would be calling me going, man, if you hear of any tours right, and I'd go, yeah. I'd go, the real problem is the guys who are touring already have the gig. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Their, their, their job because you suddenly have decided to make yourself available. Mm. So I was fortunate that I, that I really did cultivate both sides of this. So when one slowed down, I, I would just immediately jump into the other. And so I never really took time. I've never taken time off. I mean, the first time I've really honestly taken off is this year since the pandemic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> On the road every year since 1970 on some level or not. I mean, this year we did a, a, a cruise in February, a, a rock and roll cruise right. with, uh, you know, uh, Roger Daltrey and Nancy Wilson from Heart, And so, right. and right after that cruise is when everything shut down. Right. So that, that for us was, was the last opportunity to get out and play, yeah. play live. But, um, it's it's surreal to me. I mean, to be home this much, you know, I'm I'm so used to to being on the uh, on the road, and um, you know, and and we're all sitting here just going, we're not sure when. I mean, we're going to do a live stream on the 23rd with our band um, from a place called the Coach House down here. Right, right. And they're all set up with you know five stationary cameras, and then a, we're going to have a handheld and a guy mixing, and there'll be no audience, and it's a big stage. You know, we're going to put that out. Um, cool. But um, and then there's another place called the Libero Theater up in Santa Barbara that I think we're going to try to do the same thing there. Right. And, and we just want to play. And, and, you know, we're so excited. Um, like there's a movie being made about us by the uh, uh, Denny Tedesco, who's made the Wrecking Crew movie right. and their movie about us now. And we're halfway through it. And then everything's kind of on hold waiting to see you know how, how we can get crews together and all so this it's, it's very surreal you know right. we're just all dealing with circumstances that have never existed exactly before 